Well, I'm sorry we're not inside at the pool, Noah, because if we were, I was going to show you a little bit of my freestyle strokes and things like that, see if I could help you with your mm. form a little bit, even though I guess you're doing okay. You were just named Conference Swimmer of the Week not too long ago. So how's the season been going for you? Uh, it's been going well. We are fortunate this season to have um, you know strong, young base. Um, we brought in um, five guys and actually gained a sixth. Um, later in the season coming to us from the cross country team um, and you know it's just been a really uh, promising season um, the, the future looks bright for our team and uh, we don't know necessarily that we have the numbers this year to um, get a conference championship but it's something that we think in the next year or so will be a definite possibility so, so what is your favorite event to swim? You swim in so many different ones. What is your favorite event? Well, my specialty is the butterfly. Um, and I, I don't know that I have a favorite between the two butterfly events, the 100 and the 200. Um, I think the 200 is uh, a more fun race because you're, it's, it's almost like a mind game in a way. You have to, you have to really gauge the people you're swimming beside, and uh, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse sort of thing the, the entire time. But the 100 I love because there's, it's just all out speed the entire time, and uh, it's basically, uh, you don't have to think too much, <laughs> which is kind of nice. So. One thing I've always kind of wondered, do swimmers kind of talk smack? You don't say, do you get getting ready to race somebody, you say <laughs> something up there or before, I mean, you kind of glare. How, how does a swimmer kind of intimidate an opponent? You know, I, I've always been more one to keep to myself. Um, if, if anything, I'll, I'll wish the guys beside me good luck. But, um, you know, I, I think the days of trash talking usually are reserved for, uh, you know, summer swim league when you're 12 or 13 <laughs> years old. And uh, the stakes aren't aren't so high, but I think when you're, at this level of competition, you're more focused on yourself, on making sure that getting up on the block, you're uh, dialed in and um, not really concerned about what's going on the, in the minds of the guys around you. So, okay. now, now you're from Spartanburg, yes, sir. which is a lovely area. Just when I would think of Spartanburg, I don't necessarily think of swimming. So mm. how, how, do you, how did you get started in swimming yes, and, 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 what, and did you grow up doing other things mm -hmm. uh, as well sports-wise in Spartanburg? Yes, sir, I did. I, uh, I actually did not swim uh, club, which is a really popular thing, yeah, actually in my area as well, but especially here in Kentucky. Um, I, I grew up, um, always did swim during the summers, um, swam from my high school from I essentially middle school forward, which was great, but that was only a few months out of the year. Um, but I also played basketball, um, okay. played some other sports, um, and you know my parents really encouraged me to uh, dip my feet in, in different arenas, you know, so to speak. So um, swimming just kind of captured my heart my last couple years of high school, and um, got to center and realized that D3 is a great. Um, approach to the sport in my opinion you know you're you're here first and foremost as a student but it's great to be able to be here and compete um, on a high level well I always thought I'm just gonna tell you this I always thought that male swimmers were the smartest athletes out there <laughs> because where else can you go and compete in athletics and yet usually have a pool full of girls at the same time oh yes yes I mean there's no other sport that can make that claim is there? <laughs> I mean maybe maybe track but still I mean I, uh, that's always thought that male swimmers are the smartest athletes out there you know we're, we're fortunate I, I love that about this team having uh, the two uh, men and women together um, you know it, it makes sure that we don't have a testosterone overload <laughs> and it helps them not have an estrogen overload so it's a it's a nice balance, and uh, it, it brings a lot of different perspectives and backgrounds to the table. Um, so, it, it, and it feels like a really big family. We say that over and over again in this program, but it really, really does feel that way. So. Now, now, you're also here to get an education. You're, you're, you're a history major. Yes, what, sir. What led you into that field? Um, honestly, I think history um, seized my attention in high school. I had a, I was very fortunate to have a a stellar U.S. history teacher, AP U.S. history teacher, um, and you know, coming to center, I was pretty dead set on on history. But when I got here, I actually dabbled a little bit in in other uh, disciplines. So I contemplated a biology major for some time, um, took a number of biology classes, uh, politics classes, and then I just 
you know, realize that that history was in fact the the you know the field I wanted to enter. So well, sounds good. So let's just hope now history major goes well. You can keep making a little history in the pool too. Yeah.